<laughs> I'm Isabella Jimenez. I'm going to be the moderator for this, and I am from Dallas, Texas. I'm a sophomore, and I use she, her pronouns. Hammy, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, yes. I am Hammy Hamilton. I am from <laughs> Mobile, Alabama. I am a senior in high school, and I use they, them pronouns. Hi, I'm Jay Steininger. I'm from Utah. Um, I am a junior in high school, and I use he, him pronouns. That's so cool. Awesome. So the It Gets Better is a nonprofit organization with a, mi with a mission to uplift, empower, and connect LGBTQ plus youth around the globe. We are part of the Youth Voices. We're the official youth ambassador program for the organization. It's so cool. Part of it, part of It Gets Better EDU, the educational arm of the organization. So I joined Youth Voices because I just really wanted to be a person that I would have looked up to when I was my age. Hemi, why'd you join? Chase, why'd you join? I joined because, you know, living in Utah can be very hard for LGBT youth. And I've seen a lot of people have to go through some really tough times. And I wanted to kind of be there and be the person who makes it so that others don't have to go through that hard that is stuff. That is so amazing. I love it. So part of the work at It Gets Better Education is to help students become inclusive, to have inclusive places for all of the LGBTQ plus students. According to Glisten, schools need four things in order for LGBTQ plus students to really thrive like that with the rest of their peers. Inclusive curriculum, supportive ed supportive educators, inclusive and supportive policies, and supportive student clubs like GSAs. So Jace, about supportive about supportive educators, what do you think is the difference that makes for an LGBTQ plus student to be in a classroom with a supportive teacher? Well, I think first and foremost, the, the feeling that the student has when they know they're in a class with a supportive teacher is they feel safe. You know, they, they know that they have someone to go to if they're experiencing you know, bullying or harassment. Um, it takes stress away from the learning environment because, you know, it's it's easier to learn when you're not under stress and worrying about um, who if you're gonna get made fun of or anything like that. It definitely has a positive effect on mental health because, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, because you don't have to spend your whole class period and or school day, you know, worrying and being afraid of other students or teachers who may ridicule you for being LGBTQ. That's so true. And it's just incredible to have like that almost ally that's just like you that you can really like um, interact with. You know what I mean? So what do you think are some qualities specifically that you've admired in those teachers that have been the most supportive with you? I think with supportive teachers, the thing that I like the most is that they are open about themselves. It's not like it's a it's a give and take relationship. Um, so you can go to them with your problems and tell your story and they f feel open to talk about their own lives in class, which is, you know, a bond that is created and a, and a sense of trust that is created between you and the teacher, which, which really makes it easier. Um, I also like, you know, a lot of my supportive teachers, they're fun. You know, they make jokes, mm -hmm. they, they make class fun, we have cool projects and stuff and and it's easier to learn in that environment because it's more fun and you know like I said less stressful um another thing that I admire with a lot of those teachers is they let um students you know do discussions without you know imposing their opinions too much which I think is really important for not just supportive teachers but for any school environment that's so true. Hemi, do you think about inclusive curriculum? What do you think is the most important reason that we should have it? Or Jace, what do you think about that? Um, kind of connecting back to supportive teachers, inclusive curriculum gives students the place to learn about their own identities from someone other than the internet. <laughs> I know that when I was kind of doing research by myself and kind of figuring out my own identity, Google was like my best friend, <laughs> um, you know, cause I didn't have anybody who was telling me all these things and we didn't talk about it in health class and we didn't talk about it in, in like 
English class, all the, like mm -hmm. queer writers in history. You know, I didn't get any of that in school. So I think it's important because you don't have to teach yourself all the things that should be taught at home or in school, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like personally, I've also never really had the interactions except with my eighth grade middle school history teacher. She was so cool. She was really open about just everything and she was super cool and super nice. And I remember having that outlet that I felt so supported and was always super important to me. So I always kind of am really glad that I had her in my life. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. So she was really cool about like supportive policies and everything and making sure that I personally always felt safe because I've always been super proud of who I am, which I'm really glad about. Do you think that um, any inclusive and supportive policies, like what do you have in your school that's like that? So what's really great about my school is when I was taking PE last year after mm -hmm. I came out as a trans guy, female to male, um, on at the, at the first day of school, when we were starting PE, our teachers gave us little slips that were like, it's kind of like the get to know you, introduce yourself kind of thing. So she gave us a slip of paper and was like, what's your name? What name do you, like, what's your preferred name? What name do you want me to use if I speak to your parents? Uh, what pronouns do you use? And, and stuff like that. And she was like, is there anything else that you think I should know? And so I put that I was a trans man and that I didn't feel comfortable using the men's locker room because I was, you know, nervous about getting bullied. And so our school has, is really great. We have an all gender restroom, which is fantastic. And she was like, okay, on it, um, you use that to change for PE. And I was like, awesome, sick, which was really great for me um, just to have that experience and, and feel seen by my PE teacher because I know that PE is a really daunting sport or class for queer kids and, and trans kids. So mm -hmm. that was really helpful. Um, our teachers, we have like a, a no tolerance policy. So our teachers, you know, are like, okay, you can't use these words, you know, it's a it's it's a no tolerance policy for bullying, which is is really helpful, I think, because, you know, teenagers like to act like being queer or trans is, you know, like something that's horrible or awful or something that's worth making fun of someone for, which sucks. And so all the all the teachers are trained to deal with that kind of bullying, which is helpful, I think. That is so awesome. One of my teachers is actually exactly like that. Well, he's not my teacher, but he's a teacher that is just super cool. He has a flag in his room. And so does my other teacher that actually is my teacher. So awesome. They are all super cool. And I've always just felt so loved in their space, even with my teacher that isn't my teacher. But they have all just been so cool. Um, Hammy, have you what is your what has been your experience on inclusive curriculum in your school? Um, there is no uh, inclusive curriculum in the school. I'm mainly the person that's like, hey, uh, that person was queer. Like the other day in physics, we were learning about Alan Turing. And I was like, hey, he broke the German's enigma code. But not only that, he was queer. And my teacher was like, um, anyways. So <laughs> that was that was that was the interesting experience. But um, there's no inclusive curriculum specifically in my school. Um, no, because it's it's primarily a Christian school. So even though they say that, hey, anybody can worship what they want, but um, when it comes to queer and queer history, they really just don't uh, touch up upon, touch up upon it. <laughs> That's so cool that you were able to like speak up about Mr. Allen, who I'm sure was a very cool person. Um, do you think if you could make any specific changes to that, how would you incorporate more queer curriculum in your school specifically? Um, there's queer people in every genre of history, no matter if it's science, no matter if it's Greek mythology, no matter if it's hit, like, you know, early 1950s history. Like We're there's, everywhere. Yeah, you, you can incorporate any queer person in art or any subject. So um, I would try to slip in a little queer person here or there, uh, d uh, depending on the subject. Yeah, just to make sure that we all feel loved. I love that so much. So, Hammy, also, how, so I know that you said you go to a Christian school where your teachers are like queer people, anyways. So, yeah. how do you, th 
So what policies do your teachers have in place to keep those queer kids that are out and proud? How are they impacted? Are they safe? Are they, you know, kind of the victim of teasing? How does that work? We live in Alabama. <laughs> That's so true. So do your teachers, what's their kind of stance on it, outward or not? Well, um, I was outed last year um, mm -hmm. by this dude uh, who I maybe did or did not threaten to punch because he was being homophobic. Anyways, As you should. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was outed that way. But um, my principal, you know, she's cool and hip and she's like, hey, you know, I was just like you when I was younger and I still kind of am. Um, and I was like, OK, that's cool. Um, and so she has sort of a no tolerance policy uh, set up. Ooh. Yeah, that's so cool. I love it. One of my teachers is queer and he is actually one of my favorite teachers. And it's always super nice to just kind of have, like what Jace was saying, kind of have that person that is just like you and that you feel safe and close with, you know what I mean? So Jace, I heard that you are a big impact on the GSA. How is that been? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I am the gender and sexuality educator for my high school's GSA, which mm -hmm. is, I think our GSA is the only like organized advoca advocacy group in our town, which is pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> um, so I, I feel lucky that I have this role and that I get to participate in something so important. Mm -hmm. um, my experience with it has been really positive. Um, it's fun. People like it a lot. We get to do creative activities and, and educate students and, you know, it's open to everyone. Um, I think over 50 people signed up this year to do it. Oh my god, um, yay! That's so yeah. awesome! Oh my gosh, which, I love that so much. Yeah, which, you know, is vastly different from the people who actually show up to the meetings. <laughs> but but still, it's the, the, thought, it's that the thought that counts. Yeah. Um, Our minds. Um, it's, it's really well received by students at the school, administrators, teachers, and um, the, the town in general. Like, just a couple days ago, uh, the GSA presented a PowerPoint about pronouns to the city council, which awesome. was really well received. Yeah, we, we were super lucky to be able to do that. And the city council seemed to really like it. Um, it definitely fosters a safe space for students. Um, and it's been honestly a great experience. That is so cool. I love it so much. My school also has a GSA, which is super cool. And I think what's even cool is me and my friend run it. We, they want to be co-presidents, but they are senior. So I was like, you can be the real president. I'll be the vice president. Cause it was just us okay. two. And I think that one of the best things about that is this little freshman comes up to me all the time and just really looks up to me. So I'm really glad that they have that space to feel open and safe. Is that what you guys' GSA is like too? Yeah, so our goal is to kind of make kids at school feel seen. Mm -hmm. um, our town is pretty liberal, but living in Utah, which is a big conservative state, it can be really hard. So what we try to do is, you know, like I said, give that safe space to students. We Usually what we do in a meeting is we give a lesson about something. Like this past week, we gave a lesson about, you know, jokes anti like homophobic and transphobic jokes that a lot of mm -hmm. people use and like the stigma around those and then we do a fun activity which is sometimes but not always gsa related mm -hmm. so like um last time we played salad bowl which is a really fun kind of charade what salad bowl oh it's, it's kind of like charades but mm -hmm. it's more complicated um <laughs> You know, sometimes we do trivia. We did a Kahoot one time. Um, we also have socials where we, you know, get together to do fun stuff. Like we were gonna, we, we tried to watch Bohemian Rhapsody in our lecture hall, but uh, it didn't work. Mm. Oops. So we played like Kahoots instead because those are fun. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, what we kind of want is just let queer kids be just that, just kids. Um, you know, enjoy enjoy their high school experience, like I said, without being stressed out about bullying, harassment, you know, struggling with school, anything like that. And it also, you know, gives them time away from parents who might not be the most supportive. 
So it's kind of like a home. We're all like a big family and that's what we try to, you know, make as much as possible. I love that so much. <laughs> that's so heartwarming and so just amazing. Oh my God, that's so fun. Um, so do you think that within your GSA, so I know that you said that you're a junior. Did you guys have a GSA when you were a freshman? Yeah, actually. So the way my town has school system is a little weird because mm -hmm. we have middle school, which is grade six and seven. We have yeah. junior high, which is eighth and ninth grade. And then we have high oh. school, which is 10, 11, 12. So I moved here when I was a freshman. So I was in ninth grade. And so I was like brand new and I was like, oh God, queer kid, Utah, new school. Mm. Um, but actually we had a, uh, a junior high GSA, which was pretty fun. We um, got together and chatted and, and did movies and activities and stuff like that. We even went to Pride um, in Salt Lake City, which was, re which was really fun. And, and I had queer teachers who I could look up to and stuff like that. And it was honestly a really fun experience. And then I moved to, I moved up to high school and we had a, a separate GSA, which was, you know, more official, more, you know, high school kind of, kind of situation. And, and that mm -hmm. was, and that was really fun. I'm, I'm super glad that I was a part of that. And then I signed up to do the, you know, board member and training program um, in 10th grade. And the board members were super awesome. They were all seniors. So they, they knew what they were talking about. And it was, it was, it was pretty great. And then at the end of the year, um, I got promoted to board member. So that's what I am now. It's super fun. And I'm honestly glad that I got to have that GSA experience throughout living here. Um, I don't think they had one where I used to live. So I'm, I'm glad that I moved here and, and got to do that. I love that so much. So Hammy, I know that you said that your school kind of isn't the best, but how do you think that you could make it a lot more inclusive and supportive to kids like you? Like what kind of policies would you want to see at your school? That is a good question. Thanks. <laughs> um, I would like to see not only more inclusive curriculum, but more inclusive spaces, I meaning flags like it's as something as simple as an American flag I would also like to see trans flags uh pride flags and such you know because it's the small things that make such a huge difference and not only that inclusive books inclusive books in the library as well that is so true so <clears throat> Do you think that, well, Jace, have, do you guys, um, I know that you said that you have like that GSA, but have you ever seen like physical things like what Hammy was saying, like books or um, flags in your school or area? I was hoping you would ask me this question. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually a lot of my teachers have our little GSA logo sticker on their laptop. And one of my favorite teachers who, um, teaches the current issues class, which I take, which is you know awesome in itself. Um, he has a pride flag in his room and you know a lot of the teachers have rainbows on their on their doors and stuff. Even if it's really subtle, it's it's there, which is really nice to see. And you know, curriculum wise, we we did we do have inclusive uh, books and stuff like that in um, in my ninth grade English class, we read a book called Aristotle and Dante's Secret to the Universe or something or something like that. It was really good. <laughs> and it was like a cute little queer teenage love story. And um, it was it was honestly really nice to read that and be able to, you know, be seen in literature and stuff like that. Um, like I said, my current issues class, which is a class, um, is, is awesome. Right now we're talking about feminism and, and next we're going to talk about queer theory and it's a great class I would recommend everyone at my school take it and like even make it a required class because it's just that awesome I I feel really lucky um for example like in my war and protest class which is one of my English classes um my teacher used a, a Harvey Milk speech as one of her examples for how you know modern 
modern, more modern stuff relates to Henry David Thoreau's civil disobedience, which I thought was awesome. I was like, oh my God, Harvey Milk, he's like my hero. So I, I'm, I'm lucky that we get to do that stuff and, and feel seen at my school that way. <laughs> That is so amazing. Oh my gosh. I wish that everywhere was like that. Uh, I know it's all just a little bit off topic, but Hammy, I wanted to ask, I'm going to go on a whim and assume that your school doesn't have a GSA. Correct. It doesn't. Yeah. Would you? I am the GSA. Period. <laughs> so since you are the GSA, would you want to make a club like that for a GSA? And how would you incorporate that? And would your school allow something like that? Of course, I would want to incorporate it. It's the fact that there's not many GSAs in Alabama, period. Um, mm -hmm. Alabama is quite a conserv conserv conservative <laughs> community. So um, uh, it's hard to find your community, no matter where it is. But Alabama does have a, a lot of queer people. And it's growing into something bigger and bigger every year whether if that has drag school, drag, drag shows and whatever <laughs> else. But um, yeah, of course I would want to create a GSA and um, I would feel like my school would support in a way because it's my first amendment right. Period. To, um, but yeah, I would. That is so amazing and just so awesome. So I think that kind of concludes us with an incredible strong conclusion. So thank you so much, Jace and Hammy for joining me. And thank you so much to the It Gets Better Project for supporting us. To learn more, you are more than welcome and encouraged to click the link below or email us at the address below. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>